Dear listeners, some of you have asked, and rightly so, what sparked my interest in the uncanny surrounding this blessed time of year. It might surprise you to learn that I am not a devout Christian, or even celebrate the holiday at all. Digging into cultural phenomena has always been a hobby of mine, and paganism even more so. Something about leaving no stone unturned fascinated me. Nothing about our modern Christmas is anywhere near the practices of old, so it seems only proper for someone to set the record straight, so to speak. It may not be the answer you hoped for. The truth often shatters the comforts of lies. The Unexpected Guest Lisa Landry often held parties at her estate before her death, and Christmas was no exception. Her guests were the upper crust, the well-to-do of local society, and Henry Satin was no different. The way he put it, if you wanted to matter at all in society, you needed to be at the Landry Christmas party. Everyone was dressed to impress for the occasion. Satin, a business partner with the local community theater, said that he was there to land a promotion. His manager, the ever-boisterous Ian Munch, was weaving about the party flirting with anything breathing. He could almost smell the pompous attitudes of all that attended, Henry explained. To get an invitation was compared to a golden ticket. But this was no fictional factory for children to run around. It was a statement of success for those that Landry deemed worthy. No one there showed an ounce of poverty. As you might expect then, it was a bit of a shock when Lucas, the butler, reported a homeless man roaming about the driveway. There was a commotion near the main hall as people speculated who it could be. But Landry's estate was far from the main highways, a private road that could only be accessed through a gate down the hill. There was no way that Alistair, Landry's chief of security, would have let some vagabond just roam up here. And then Henry told me that one of the guests had an idea. It was going to be late, and the temperature was dropping rapidly, so Emily Richardson suggested that we let the man in for a warm meal. Well, it, it didn't go over so well. Who knows what sort of disease that tramp might be carrying, some said. Others suggested that the only reason the man was there was to steal from Liza. After all, her items were worth millions. While they were debating, somehow the man found a way inside to the crowd. Henry said that no one could really recall exactly how the homeless man had gotten inside, simply that he now was there. The crowd seemed to disperse as he moved towards the main master staircase, his breath a toxic cloud of booze and meth. Henry claimed, however, that this man did not seem to be an ordinary drunk. It was something else entirely. The air had suddenly gotten a lot colder when he arrived, and the crowd quieter. I think we all could sense that whatever this man was doing here, his intentions were not pure. Then the homeless man pointed a finger accusingly towards Landry, and called her by her maiden name. Some said that she fainted, but Henry told me otherwise. She was standing on the balcony, overlooking the party when this... This man just gave her the death stare. It made her panic, and she tried to run, but somehow her feet fell from under her. She... She toppled over the banister, and... She... She fell to the stairs below. I'll never forget that sickening sound when her body broke on the marble steps. Music stopped when everyone realized that the master of the house was dead. And suddenly, the homeless man was gone. Henry said that he was the one that phoned the police. And everyone corroborated a different story for them.
It was an accident, they told authorities. Not a soul mentioned the homeless man or the... the vendetta that he seemed to have for Landry. Henry seemed content with his version of events, despite the fact that it left so much untold. But you must know by now my curiosity got the better of me, and I had to go see the house for myself. Where decadence and splendor stood, it's just a monument to failure now. The gates of iron were overgrown with kudzo, and I found a way through easily. The ground felt like they were whispering to me, telling me which way to go. The police tape was still there, the house now abandoned and boarded up. With Landry gone, no parties would be held here anymore. Inside, I shone a flashlight to push past cobwebs and dust, search for clues that would give me an idea of who this uninvited guest was. I recall the detail that Henry mentioned the man spoke of Landry's maiden name. It made me choose to climb the stairs and search for her belongings. What had happened to her family before she started to throw such lavish parties? Word on the street said that she had inherited all of it from her husband, a bad case of cancer that she had tended to dutifully. I pulled out drawers, pushed aside bookshelves, even turned over mattresses but it was barren. A sharp, stiff breeze floated through the house when I made my way back to the stairs. I had already guessed that I was going to be visited by my own visitor that unholy night. You're not going to find anything. She made every trace of me disappear years ago, the homeless man said. A better look at him told me that this was, in fact, Landry's husband. The photos on the mantle matched almost perfectly. But how could he be here if dead all those years ago? This is my house now, the spirit told me. I will be the one to host parties, he intoned as he pointed for me to leave. I didn't have the courage to ask the details of his life for fear that he might choose to take my own. So I passed by the spectral visitor and I tipped my hat, vowing to never return. Since that time, I wondered if I had imagined the whole thing as an explanation for what Landry had done. And clearly she had murdered her spouse and used the party as an excuse to commit suicide. This was the logical explanation. But then... Christmas looms closer, and I get a card in the mail, an invitation from the Landry estate to attend their party, a reminder of what ill fate will occur should others choose fame over family. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and it's the end of today's video, or today's episode of the podcast, which means I want to tell you guys, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for hitting like, and subscribe, and bell, and I think it's still subscribe on podcasts. One day I'll look that up. If you guys are listening on your phone, like I think the statistics say like 90% of you are, then on your phone you can also listen on another place. It's an app called Chilling. The Chilling app allows you to listen to stories from me that you can't get here, as well as stories from a whole group of other narrators. A lot of them you've heard before, some of them you've even heard here, like Autumn Ivy. Plus, it allows you to control the background music and background ambiance, which I think is probably one of the coolest features on there. Check out Chilling on Android and iOS now. I wanna give a very big thank you to everybody on Patreon, especially Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Brian Arse, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Kraus, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Robert Schonkwiller, USMC, Matt Bach, Jables Raz, Mask Note, Joshua Mullen, Dan Pham, Matthew McNeese, Ben Spates, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Fikamel, Nana, The Morgan, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Isodo Hatred, Nessie, 
Ronnie Hansen, Parafa Panda, Bardohawk764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, at Grizzly Olsen Pro, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Jay, Miss Xandra, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Willis, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. Like I said, I, I cannot thank you guys enough for being a part of this, and that goes to everybody down there in the description, and everybody who even can just support for one dollar. Thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, and sweet dreams.